Hi, this is Bob, W9RAN. I was recently given the opportunity to evaluate a new and innovative software-defined radio called AirSpy. It's created by Yusuf Tool, the author of the very popular SDR Sharp software. Remember when credit card size meant something really small? Well, three AirSpies can fit on a credit card. So what kind of performance could you expect from something that small? Well, if you forget about size and how many knobs and buttons it has, and just think about performance, I think a receiver can be described with three basic specifications. Number one, sensitivity. Ideally, a receiver should be able to hear any signal that the laws of physics allow. So this really comes down to signal-to-noise ratio. And the human ear and brain are a pretty good instrument for judging that. Number two is selectivity. Not only should a good receiver be able to separate adjacent signals, but it shouldn't make any false ones of its own. So that means no images, aliases, birdies, phase noise, or other RF junk from the receiver to interfere with the signals we really want to hear. And lastly, how does a receiver adapt to various uses? Because we all have different interests and needs, a good receiver should be adjustable to compensate for different conditions or applications. A 10 meter band opening gave me the perfect opportunity to see how the tiny air spy compared to a bunch of other receivers in a side-by-side -side test using the VE7 MTY 10 meter beacon from Pitt Meadows, British Columbia in Canada, about 1800 miles away. This beacon transmits a series of four power levels at 25, 10, two and one half watt at the end of each transmission. So you get a pretty good indication of how sensitive your receiver really is. Well, every signal is going to fade up and down. A continuous beacon is pretty good for making receiver comparisons. We all know that receivers and S meters can vary all over the map, even if they're properly aligned and calibrated. So sometimes it's better to just sit back and listen to different receivers using the same antenna and a consistent signal source, like a beacon. There are two parts to the following video. In the first part, I record one 20-second beacon sequence from a variety of receivers so that you can get an, a sense of how each one of them reproduces the same signal.
Next, I connected the same antenna to AirSpy and went through a set of adjustments to optimize AirSpy using the AirSpy controller. Well, the first step is something new to most of us called decimation. I had already set the AirSpy to send 2.5 million samples per second to my old PC, which really means at first we're going to see 2.5 megahertz out of the 10-meter band. But by selecting decimation to 32, we narrow that down to about 78 kilohertz. Decimation is kind of software magic because pay attention to the dB scale on the left side of the display. What you'll see is the baseline noise floor will actually go down. That's because decimation trades bandwidth for signal-to-noise ratio, which is really what sensitivity is all about. Because the signal that's buried in noise is really no better than the one we can't hear. Three RF gain adjustments are provided for the low noise amplifier, the mixer, and the IF amplifier stages. Now, in most receivers, these kinds of gains are determined at the factory and locked in place. But with a wideband receiver that's capable of tuning to nearly two octaves, you need some way to tweak the gain for optimal reception. And you will hear with your own ears how the strength of the beacon is increasing, yet the signal-to-noise ratio improves because the noise floor does not go up with it. Watch how, after decimation, of the already good minus 80 dB noise floor, it's reduced even further to minus 90 dB, and how the signal peaks at minus 50 dB, which is four units on the spectrum display. So that's 40 dB signal-to-noise ratio. And that's why the beacon signal stands out so loud and clear, and why it would be such a pleasure to listen to without the crunch of background noise or that pumping AGC all the time. Now, since many of us got our first taste of software-defined radio with a $15 DVB-T dongle, as I described in my January QST article in 2013, I thought it would be appropriate to wrap up this video with a comparison versus a dongle. The first thing you'll notice is where the noise floor is, minus 55 to minus 60 dB, so we start out much noisier than airspike. The little dongles are amazing for what they do for the price, but as you can easily see and hear, you don't get something for nothing. Specifically, you don't get that extra 30 to 40 dB reduction in the noise floor that's made possible by AirSpy's 12-bit A to D converter and the finely tweaked software algorithms that give us that big improvement. So let's review the characteristics of a good receiver. Number one, sensitivity. AirSpy hears every signal that a conventional receiver can hear, right down to the noise floor. Number two, selectivity. AirSpy is free of images or other byproducts of its own making. We'll look at the advantages of its 10 megahertz wide spectrum capability in a future video after my new computer arrives. And number three, 
configurability. AirSpy gives the user the tools to configure the RF front end to cope with a wide range of conditions and selectable levels of decimation to really bring out the signal range of interest. The AirSpy software has been fine-tuned to provide maximum sensitivity, but the AirSpy controller gives the user the ability to optimize those settings as desired. There's a lot more flexibility in your radio than just having a resistive attenuator switch or that infamous IPO button. If you'd like more information about AirSpy, go to airspy.com, or you can always drop in IRC on hashtag AirSpy. Thanks in 73 from W9RAN.